Next, we're going to hear from Karen Probert, who's going to talk about the Pediatric Obesity Coin Project and their work to get healthy eating and physical activity in ECE settings in Ohio. Um, Karen is the Executive Director of the Association of State Public Health Nutritionists, found, founded in 1952. ASPHN is a nonprofit membership organization that provides state and national leadership on food and nutrition policy programs and services aimed at improving the health of our population. Thank you. So I only have seven minutes for this, and in my introduction, took care of a few. I'm the director of ASPHN. We're a nonprofit membership organization. Our members are public health nutritionists working primarily in state government agencies, so departments of health, departments of education, departments of agriculture, that's where our members are. So I just have a few minutes to share about a project that we just had in place last year that we started, and the first round of that project ended in December called the Pediatric Obesity Mini Coin, and I'm going to have a few minutes to talk about the success of one of those coin teams um, from Ohio. So I don't have much time, so I'm going to give you the, um, the acronym of COIN stands for Collaborative Improvement and Innovation Network. Four big words that give you a sense of what a COIN is. They're um, somewhat new, but they're typically used to achieve results quickly in response to complex health problems. Uh, prevention and control of childhood obesity is a complex health problem, so the COIN was a model that we wanted to use with the members in our organization. A couple of things I want to mention about the, the general program. It was um, supported financially, in some ways also spiritually and emotionally by the Maternal and Child Health Bureau. Coin, the gold standard coin typically has a fair, quite a bit of funding, and they have several years to work on their initiative, and they have multiple different strategies, or they're called drivers, that they're trying to work on. Although grateful for the funding we had, we had a small amount of funding, and we had to show impact in nine months. So we developed a mini coin. We targeted um, the population of our um, focus was children ages two to five years old. And instead of so several strategies, our members just focused on policies and practices in the ECE setting. We, the requirements of joining the COIN, we required you form a team, and we had required team members. We also had a list of recommended team members. Those teams had to meet monthly. They had to attend a webinar monthly, and the, uh, at least four team members had to come to an in-person meeting in June where states were able to share with each other in person. We required participation and evaluation. It was a minimal amount of burden on the state teams, but we did require that. We, uh, one of the I's in COIN stands for quality improvement, and we required the state teams use the PDSA, which stands for Plan, Do, Study, Act, Quality Improvement Model. And then we also required the state teams to be innovative within the spectrum of opportunities that we've been hearing about um, from Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Four teams last year said, sign me up. I'm going to talk about the success of the Ohio team, but we also had Arkansas, Louisiana, and Wisconsin. So Ohio's success, I like to say, within a very short amount of time, seven months, they were able to get into their state licensing rules, so an update coming soon. Um, five of their eight recommended um, licensing rule changes. And I have heard from the team lead that although their COIN team only proposed eight, several of their early on recommendations ended up in the licensing rules because of team members that were participating on the COIN, but those recommendations didn't end up in that, in the COIN team's um, list of recommendations. A couple of comments on how this happened, because that's um, a lot of changing licensing rules is often um, identified as lengthy, long-term, and they were able to make a difference in just a few months. So they had a very strong, passionate team, a big team, 
They had four organizations that were represented, three state agencies on their team. And they had a representative from the State Head Start Association. One of the things a team lead has um, talked with me about as a key element of success for their team was a lot of respect among the team members. If a team member had an opinion or perspective, they went, um, and so two minutes, um, they went, thank you. <laughs> um, they really um, valued what team members said. The timing was right for Ohio. They had a lot of activity going on in the state, somewhat disconnected, and so the COIN process allowed them to take advantage and pull all of those um, things together that were happening. Again, they used the PDSA cycle, their rapid quality improvement helped them to go from, they started this process with 27 recommendations, and through the PDSA cycle and, and working with their partners, they got that down to eight recommendations. So their proposed um, licensing rules have to do with these five topic areas. So what's next? What were our lessons learned? We're going to do it again. 2016, we're going to have another coin. And we're fortunate to have um, financial support this year from Centers for Disease Control and Prevention that will be funding an expansion and extension of the coin, as well as funding from Maternal and Child Health Bureau again to help um, do a pediatric obesity mini coin in 2016. Um, actually, applications are due today at noon Eastern. Um, so um, hopefully, we're looking at probably about nine additional states interested in this project. Um, I have um, my name, and obviously, um, you've seen the contact list for participants in today's meeting. So here's my name and phone number, or excuse me, email address, and the team lead for the state of Ohio, Amia Oppenheim, who's also here. Her name is in the um, contract list is available to answer any questions. Thank you.